German surrender, which ended World War II, came on May the 7th, 1945. Nazi structures were dismantled, Holocaust camps liberated, and for the first time in years, the world was looking up. But there were some who wanted to carry on the work the Nazis had been conducting. In the Highlands of Scotland, an English man by the name of Peter Adams had grown fascinated with the grotesque experiments which the Nazis had conducted on people in the concentration camps. And so in 1947, he assembled a selection of surgical tools and medical equipment, and he set up his very own room of experiment. He spent the summer months combing the highlands for travellers and tourists, snatching them if ever the chance arose. He kept them locked in small cages, stacked on top of each other in the corner of his hut. As the months passed by and the winter drew in, he realised he didn't have enough resources to sustain a long-term project. And so over the space of a week or so, he took his captives one by one and mutilating them in various ways each time making sure the rest of the captives were watching. He took immense pride in the fear and pain he inflicted on his victims, and all the time he was documenting and observing the psychological effect his experiments would have on his captives. When he came to the final captive and dragged her out of her cage, he looked into her eyes and could no longer see a human being. Instead, he saw what he described as das Gespenst. This excited him, and so he wanted to immortalise her. He believed this could only happen if her body stayed in one piece, and so he decided to hang her from the support beam in the hut. He watched her hang there for several minutes as she desperately gasped and clawed for air. When she had succumbed to hanging, he took her down and dug a shallow grave several feet from the hut to bury her in. He then spent the next few years writing down his experiences and findings, but most interestingly he documented being haunted by the spirit of a young woman who would rattle the doors and windows violently through all hours of the night. Slowly but surely he drifted into madness before eventually in 1949 he hung himself from the same support beam which he had hung the young woman from around two years earlier. Fast forward to 2020 and the hut still remains in the exact location. Facts have become rumours, rumours have become myths. Over the years, several of Peter Adams' documents have mysteriously vanished. The question is, were they lost? Or is someone carrying on his work to this very day?